Hello, today we are going to digitize a key fob or snap tab in embroidery wear. I'm going to preface this video by saying I have never even stitched one of these, so bear with me on the exact settings and everything. This is kind of what I have just kind of gleaned from what I have seen in some designs that I happen to have in my collection. So adjust things as necessary to suit your needs. I have my five by seven hoop already open on the screen and I have it zoomed in a bit. And we're going to be working with um, a two by two area for the actual fob and then we'll do a two inch tab. The first thing we'll do is we're going to go to the line tool which is up here on the toolbar and I'm gonna activate that. I'm going to actually show you two different ways to digitize this. And we're gonna come down here and we'll start right next to where the tab will be. The tab is going to be a half inch wide. So we'll center that right here on the quarter inch line and we'll stop at the quarter inch line on the other side of zero. So I'm just going to click my mouse and I'm gonna draw a line. So we're going to need this one inch on this side. We started at a quarter, so that means we stop at the one and a quarter mark. And I'm just going to take the time to get these nice and straight and get them centered. And I just clicked on that point. And now I'm going to go ahead and come down here and I'm going to go down to the two inch point. And that will make our square for the bottom. And then I'm going to come over here and do the same thing over here at the one inch mark on this side of zero. Just taking the time to get my line nice and straight. And at this point, I'm going to end my drawing. So I'm going to, I'm going to show you the two different ways. This is the first way. I'm going to right click my mouse and I'm going to select end drawing. And then you see we have the start of our design here and it will come up over here and it will show that part. Now I'm going to show you the other way. What we're gonna do is, with this part is we're gonna come back and we're gonna cut these corners. And I think that's probably the most efficient way to do it is just draw your whole design and then come back and cut the corners. The reason for that is you're gonna need a placement stitch, which will just be a running stitch. And that doesn't have to have perfect corners. So you don't have to do all this extra work for that because the corners don't, You'll notice right here, the stitch settings, it kind of cuts the corner a little bit. With your bean stitch, when you come along, you'll want that to be nice and neat. For the running stitch, it isn't really gonna matter. So I'm gonna go ahead and come up back up here and select my line tool again. And you'll notice that this will be much quicker doing it, the drawing the whole thing and then cutting it apart. I'm going to center right over the very end point of where I left off and I'm gonna click my mouse and I'll come up here and I'm gonna take the time to get it nice and straight. That looks good, I need to come up just a little further, right there. And then I'm going to end drawing. That gives me one separate little line, you'll notice right there. Then I'm gonna select my line tool again and center it right over the top. And you can see this would be very tedious doing each individual step. And I think when you see the split tool, you'll notice, you'll realize that that's gonna be quicker for you. But I wanna show you both ways because what's great for one person may not be perfect for another. And remember this one needs to go to the quarter inch side of the zero, which is right there. Let's take the time to get it all lined up. And you, if you make a mistake, you can move these points as well. That looks good. I'm gonna end my drawing and then I'm gonna select my tool again. And now we're gonna make the tab. So we wanna go up two inches from zero. So I'm gonna center this right over that. And I'm gonna come up here to the two inch mark and click it and drawing. Grab my tool again, center it over.
and this is only the half inch wide, so we're only going over to here. Oops, and then we want to end drawing, and then grab the line tool again. And if you're doing a circular area down here, you would just use your circle tool or you can draw whatever shape you'd like. You can actually get a shape off from an image if you'd like and then just put the tab design on it. And then we're going to come down here and we're going to go right back over the top of our start point here. Get it all lined up and nice and straight. Then we don't have to edit it later. There we go. And end drawing. You'll notice as I'm doing each of these, we have a line for each of those. Over here, we just have that one big area. So that one is right here. So I'm going to select that one. And now I'm going to show you how to use that split tool. That looks like I didn't quite get that centered. But that's okay. You get the idea. Yeah, I should have gone over to this inch and a quarter. But that's okay. You'll get the idea. Up on the Curve Modifications tool, if you click that, you'll see Split Curves. Now, this will also do lines, so don't let the curves part throw you off. Just click that while you have the section that you need to split, highlight, or select it up here. Then you just come over to the point that you need to split, and remember how these stitches go kind of kitty corner across the edge there. All I'm going to do is just click that point right there, and you'll see that now we have another line here, and then we have this one here. This one has been cut off from the others. Now that split curves, that split tool stays highlighted, so all you would need to do is come down here and click the next one. There we go. I just didn't click it exactly. So. Now we have all of our little areas here, and unfortunately now it's put, it up, put them out of order. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just go through and we'll get these ordered. We know that the last two that we did need to go up to the top. So I'm just moving those up, and we'll just click them in order and make sure we have it stitching. We want it to go right down through here, come up here, and finish here. So as I'm clicking these, you can see the one flashing red over here that indicates which one that is. This one needs to go before that. Let's find where that one is. That's down there. There it is right there. So this one needs to go up to the top. So now we have that one, and we have this one, and we have that one, that one. So far, so good. And right now I'm just making sure it's going to stitch correctly. Okay, these are all in order. Now, if you did do all of these lines separately, you do need to make sure that you click your start point and your end point in the right direction so that it stitches the right way. And this is, all of these steps right here are just this little box. What we're going to do next is we're going to assign a stitch type to these. But before we do that, we're going to duplicate, and actually I think we need to duplicate each one individually. And here's where doing the individual, or doing the whole box, and then duplicating it, and then cutting the one apart would be a lot easier. So we'll come up here and we're going to click duplicate, and that's got Actually, let me highlight this last one down here. It should put this new one down below this one that's highlighted. So I've got the first one selected, and we'll click Duplicate, and it did. Okay, that's exactly what we want. And now we'll do the second one. And the reason we need this is because we need a placement line and we need our bean stitch line. This is going to get kind of tricky to keep track of which parts we've done so far. 
So hopefully I get them all and get them all in the right order. And if we miss one, it's, it's easy enough to go back in and duplicate it and put it in the right order. Hopefully this is the last one. Now you're going to see all these little pieces over here, but when this goes into a stitch file, it will, into, into your machine file, it will stitch them all right together. So there's no need to worry about that. So we know that... I'm just clicking these along here to make sure we have the right ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. These are all going to be our placement lines. So we have them all selected, and we're going to add our stitches to our lines. So we're going to go down here to add, add stitches to lines, and we're going to change it to true to turn it on. And... Then we're going to do as drawn single because that will just be a nice little running stitch. And you can probably bump this up to maybe a 35 because you don't really need to have close together stitches for the, this is just showing you where to put your, your vinyl down. So we'll go through and I'm going to do this the quick way. If you just click the select heading up here, it will turn everything off. And then nine through 16 will be our bean stitch. So we've just got all of those selected. And I missed one, there we go. And we're gonna add stitches to lines again. And we're gonna click true to turn it on. And I'm pretty sure that you wanna turn this closed part on to true. I believe what that does is it just makes sure that there is a stitch that matches up with the very end there. I'm pretty sure that's what it does. It actually closes the circle, so to speak. And I would, I'm going to suggest to start with a setting of 30 and see where that takes you. Again, like I said, I have not done these. Um, I just did a little bit of experimentation to find out approximately what we wanted to use here. And to do a bean stitch, you just do as drawn triple. And that should be pretty much all we really need to do at this point. And the reason you're seeing all these little dots in here, you're seeing the running stitch, which is a different length underneath the others. So as I'm turning this off, you'll see what our bean stitch is going to be here. So I'm gonna turn off showing you the running stitch so that you can see what your bean stitch will look like. I'm going to also hide these red and green boxes so that you can really see the corners because that was a concern that someone had in getting the nice sharp corners. So I'm going to turn off viewing the stitch start and stop. And you'll see that our stitches go right to the corner and they don't cut the corner everything is nice and sharp. What you would do at this point is you would insert your design in this area and you would insert it right between the end of your running stitch and the beginning of your bean stitch. And that should be really pretty much all there is to making one of these. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to just completely clear this out and rather than have to undo everything 
and redo my hoop the way I've got it set. I'm just going to erase all of my steps. I'm going to do this the other way now of drawing the whole thing, duplicating it, and then splitting the one, just so you can see how that is completely done. I'm going to grab my line tool up here, and I'm going to try to do this exactly the same way that I did the other one. So just bear with me while I draw some lines. And we want to go out to the inch and a quarter. And this may not be exactly perfect, so just kind of bear with me. This one will probably turn out better than the last one did. And then we wanted this to be two inches long. If you want it to be, we'll go ahead and make it two and a quarter, just for the sake of argument here. And notice I'm taking the time to make sure that these are all nice and lined up. And now I'm going to end my drawing. So I've drawn the whole thing, and you see the little wonky corners, and that's okay. I'm going to go back up here, and I'm going to turn back on the start, stop, stitch viewing. And you'll see right here, I started here and I ended here. The green is the start, and the red is the end. So now I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to duplicate this whole thing. So I've got one step that I need to duplicate. So I go up to the Edit menu, and I click Duplicate. And then we've got our second one here. So I'm going to go ahead and that's the one I want to separate. So I'll leave that one highlighted. This first one we will change to be the running stitch. The second one will be our bean stitch. So remember the bean stitch one we want to cut apart so that we get those nice crisp corners. So now that I have this highlighted here, selected, I'm going to come up to my curve modifications menu and I'm going to click split curves. Now this one right here is already has a start and a stop. So I'm just basically all I need to do is go along and I need to need to click each of these corners. Just the little square on the corner. And that makes a section for each one of those. Just like that. And you can see that this is going to be a lot more efficient to get this design done. Now that all of these are here and they're all selected, all I need to do now is come down here and apply my stitches to it. I'm going to go ahead and hide this one so that it's not confusing you. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off viewing those start and stop areas. I'm going to go add stitches to lines, true. I'm going to go ahead and make the close true. I, I'm pretty sure that's what we want to do here. If, if I'm not correct, I'll add that into the notes if somebody corrects me. And we're going to go ahead and leave the length at 30, and you can change that if you wish. The lower the number, the longer and fewer stitches you will have. So that's a little bit of information just to help you which direction you may want to go. And the type is going to be as drawn triple. We want to use as drawn, not just triple, because if you use just triple, it may, if you had curves in here, it would probably make things a little wonky. With the straight lines, it's not such an issue. So now that those are all changed, now all we have to do is deselect all of those. And we're going to unhide this first one, which is going to become our outline. So I have that one selected. And we'll add stitches to that. We're going to turn that on. And we'll make go ahead and make those a little bit longer. I'll make that one 35 just like I did in the other one. And we need to do this one as, as drawn single. I'm not quite sure why those are so oddball like that. Oh, it's because we're seeing all of these. That's why. There we go. I just hid all of our bean stitches, and now you see our running stitch going around there. 
And that's pretty much all there is to it. I think this is the, the easiest, most efficient way, but, the, but, but you can do it whichever way is most comfortable for you. I hope this video has helped, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me.